Welcome back to the Ultimate Pool Pro Cup here on BT Sport. It's time to get our match on then for a place in the quarterfinal. Sean Chipperfield versus our fan dad, Simon Webb and Mick Hill to talk you through this one. We certainly are on a great match up here in the group final. Sean Chipperfield gets us underway, makes a ball off the break. Probably wasn't the cleanest break he's ever hit in his life, but he'll be happy to have the first chance. Yeah, not a bad spread for Sean there. As you said, didn't hit him amazingly well, but managed to get one. At first glance, it, it, it looks like the red balls, but... We spoke in the, the studio, just touched on the fact that Sean's just has to go straight back on, whereas Arfan has the time to, to sort of reset. Do you think that can play a, a part, a, a sort of factor? Or do you think someone like Sean is so used to just tournament play of playing and then going straight back on? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think so much, so much with from Sean's perspective. Maybe that some players possibly, but it wasn't like it was a grueler, was it, or yeah. like a real drama, a dramatic ending where your nerve ends are kind of up and down. It was a kind of in the end, a bit of a routine get over the line, wasn't it? So you haven't got that factor. Um, he could play into the cluster here, or he could play on the one next to the eight. OK, so he's played to move this ball. Uh, and if he's landed on the plant there, he's going to be over the moon with that. Um, I think he has. It does look like he. I think he's had a quick glance at it and it accepted it goes, and now looking at other options. Will he play? Yeah, he's over the moon with that result, to be honest. He's looking to play on the one he's nearest to and kind of dabbing it into the top right. Very fiddly little shot. I don't think he'll play that, but he did look at it. Mm, elected to come back into them. Nothing left but the thing cut along the bottom cushion now. Yeah, and he may, he may elect to try and hold the cue ball here by making another little nudge or in and out of bulk, however he sees it. He may nudge his own ball. Lovely little shot. Lovely control. Still not perfect on either ball, though. No. He could be the one next to the eight ball here and just pop the eight ball across. So just kind of play it and stun into the eight and punch the eight ball over. You think he can play it firm enough to get the eight ball yeah, past the I, yellow? Yeah, I, I would, yeah. I mean, he might have played softly, but I would have played it that way. Uh, nice shot. It was just percentage is the, the better way to play it, I feel. Yeah, you try and play it delicately and it welds itself to the yellow and you kick yourself. Excellent start from Sean Chipperfield. Up and running with a lovely break clearance. Probably not the best break, as we mentioned, but lovely couple of control shots in the middle there. He's up and running. Still a race to seven frames. Still a 40-minute match clock. 30 seconds on the shot clock until the final 10 minutes where we go to 15 seconds a shot. So a very similar story here for our fan dad who had to sit and watch the first frame without touching the table in his opening match against Jake, against Jake McCartney. So nothing new for him here. Be interesting, the big thing for me with our fan, what break is he going to use? He chopped and changed quite a bit in his first match. Yeah, and it's never nice to, to, to have that, you know, from, from a mental perspective where you're not quite sure of where you want to break from and how you kind of want to be hitting them. It, you know, it can, it can be quite frustrating to, to not have something in place that you're confident with. So it looks like he's going down the centre. The last time he went with this break, he screwed a cue straight back into the top left. Wow, big, big break. Look at the eight ball. Yeah, that's uh, the biggest break he's hit today. That's absolutely huge. Really got the balls moving. I think that's four balls. Yeah, two of each. Very powerful, so yellows is his choice. Yellow balls in play. And a fairly comfortable finish. You have to say, for yeah. your opening chance of the match. He would have liked to have been on the one above the centre pocket as we look there. It, it, I don't think it's going to change a lot, but he would have liked, I think, to have to have finished on, the, on that one so he could have played it in the right centre. 
He may elect to play the one in the corner and go back for that one now. Extension called. I mean, it's the only ball that, you know, is even half an issue, you know what I mean? He could play on it last. Um, he may play the one in the centre now and hold on the red. The only issue with going this way is potentially be getting back out for your next ball when you're on the cushion. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really like it, but I can understand why. Well, he certainly queued at that one, didn't he? he really concentrated. Yeah, queuing across the cushion just gave that an extra bit of feathering up, actually. And, and just with that first shot, not getting on that ball, um, he's chasing it a little bit. He doesn't want to kiss it. Wow. A lovely shot in the end. Simple work left. Didn't want to leave himself hampered queuing as well. <laughs> Shake of the head. What should have been a very simple eight ball is now just enough to make him think. And no mistakes. So a good response from our fan, Dad. Breaking clearance each. And we are both players up and running now in this match. One frame all. Quick look at the daddy, our fan, Dad's profile. New professional for 2022, but he has had a very good 2021 season. Winning an event on the World Rules Pool Tour. Our fan, one of the players that likes to play multiple different Q sports, so winning the 2019 Joy Open, or he was a finalist in the 2019 Joy Open, as well as winning five times on the GB9 Nine Ball Tour. He's had lots of success, success his best year, without a doubt, in this form of the game in 2021. They didn't really move at all, did they? No, not the split he wanted. Mm. Our first drive break, break in the match. So Arthur comes to the table. Yellows is his choice. Only one real, really awkward yellow, but it's not that even that awkward. A really nice open layout, really. Yeah, played that nicely. You could see him. Um, hmm, a couple of couple of choices here. He could drop this in and just tickle the one into the centre. He could tickle the yellow over the centre. He could leave them completely and play the, those two last. So he's elected to tickle it over. Just so he could he could use it to do a little bit more with the cue ball. Um, he's got to be a little bit careful if he plays this in off the red that he doesn't use, the other red doesn't cover the pocket. Like that. Like that. So he obviously isn't too concerned about that pocket. Just wonder if the yellow, so the yellow that I'm thinking might be the problem, the one nearest the top right-hand corner pocket, that might have half a pocket as it is now. Obviously, he could play this one off the red and just nudge it away if a little the, bit more as well. If the red doesn't move, mm. I feel like he lost his way a little bit in that in, in that finish. He didn't quite kind of set his stall out of what he was trying to achieve. Um, almost kind of winging it a little bit, you know, with each shot, and it caught up with him in the end. The first real mistake in the match, and it comes from our fan dad. A layout that he would have expected to take out. I'm sure Sean, when he sat in his chair, would have looked at it and thought, well, that's that frame. And now he's got an opportunity. So even though it's off his break, it will feel like he's taking one away from our fan. So would, 
does, does he play top left, top right, or does he play top right and then play the plant? Neither. He's going to play the same pocket. It's fair enough. But it just means that when he plays this kind of one over the top right, oh, he's he's got us all at sixes and sevens here, Sean. I'm gonna, I'm just going to leave him to it on this one. Yeah, he's seeing the, the the shots the same way as in the balls in the pockets, but going a different route to the the way you're seeing it. But there's a, that just shows how many different ways there are to do it. I kind of like him leaving that one top right to get onto this ball because it's a natural. Um, so I certainly understand the thinking behind it. It's always a good sign of a, a good pattern when your last three, four balls are just really nice, simple shots. And that's how Sean has worked it here. And really speeds up for the final four balls as well. And Sean, Sto uh, Sean, sorry, Sean Chipperfield, Timmy Sean's, is back in front, two frames to one. But importantly, punishing a mistake from our fan dad. Well, we've seen our fan's profile. Let's have a quick look at Sean's profile and the big headline achievement: 2016 world champion. Anybody that can get a world title to their name is right at the top end of the the game. He'll be pleased with his season with Ultimate Pool couple of semi-finals, ranked seven, but he didn't have the, the big title. Everyone wants to get their hands on a, on a title. And when you're a former world champion, that's what you come into these events for. So he'll be pleased with the consistency, but maybe would rather have got a title on the board. Yeah, and I suppose the fact with um, Shane Thompson being so greedy and getting three of them, <laughs> yeah. uh, only, only leaves another, another few to get your hands on. So... Um, you know, you've just got to keep putting yourself in a position to, um, you know, to knock the door and hopefully it'll open for you. Yeah, eight pro series titles in 2021 and Shane Thompson won three of them. Good break from our fan here. Another good opportunity. Yellow balls in play. looking to respond to the error he made in the previous frame. Yeah, he's not fell nicely on this yellow. He'd have liked to a little bit more angle to be able to, to get out. He might just be OK. Yeah, played that well. So he just wants to kind of figure out how he wants to, to go about this because the yellow on the right-hand side the kind of designated pocket would, would would be bottom right, but whether he can play it there, he could move it here if he wanted to. Oh, he'll take that all right. For a second there, he thought he was going to go in off with a thick kiss on the, the yellow. Yeah, a little bit fortunate there, because trying to move it, you've kind of got to try and hit the underside of that yellow so that you don't bring the, the scratch into the middle pocket into play. Um, as well as the fact you'd rather it bumped over the middle so you could play the one to the bottom left first, then the one in the middle and yeah. get you a nice route through to the eight ball. Kind of got away with one there. Um, so it looks like he's eyeing up the centre pocket to draw back somewhere where he is now. Is, is, is that the idea? I like the one down the rail here. Leave the one over the centre for your last ball. Yeah, I don't think he wants to do it because he doesn't like the traffic from the bottom yellow to the one over the middle, but I think it's the correct way. Oh, and then he's ended up playing that we run inside. I don't, I don't really know why. So another so. frustrating visit to the table for our fan dad, where it looks like he was going to make the clearance and just comes a little bit lost towards the back end of his finish. Yeah, he's ended up trying to play that we run inside. I think he could have just dropped it in. So surely Sean plays red onto yellow here and, and turns the table over. That's exactly what he's looking at. He's pointing his finger at the table to see if he puts the cue ball where his finger was. Is he leaving anything on? Yeah, that had to What's be the said? shot. Lovely, lovely shot. And well played as well. So we've got to try and make something happen here, our fan. Lots of side spin, top rail. Try and pop the yellow in the side pocket. Like that. Oh, oh great effort. 
great effort. That really was a brilliant effort from our fan. Now, does Sean have a go? Or does he pot a red, play the red onto the yellow and turn it over again? I like that shot again because you're not leaving an easy... OK, the yellow's very close to the middle pocket, but you're not leaving, leaving a natural angle to get to it. Um, He's going to go. I think Sean's going. Um, I did like to play the red onto the yellow, I must be honest, and turn the table over. But... So he's backing his cue ball to get yeah. onto this one. Can he play the red in off the yellow here? Bottom, bottom, uh, bottom left. So he pots this one, comes up, plays the red in off the yellow to open the pocket for the other red. He's absolutely perfect. There we go. Doesn't want to be straight in the one in the centre, and that's an e that is an excellent shot. This time in complete agreement with your assessment of the way to go about the, the clearance as well. Really nicely done, making a slightly tricky situation look really simple. Yeah, and I think it just goes to show like what we said of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the contrast between attack and defend. Well, he does manage to get the frame on the board. Excellent finish to punish that mistake from our fan dad. Opens up a two-frame lead for the first time, and he's by far the happier of the two players. Yeah, I, th I think I think just looking at that that, that, that game there, I think it's, it's interesting to point out that Sean Chipperfield, um, former snooker player, would have relatively come onto the scene when world rules were, 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 were in play, um, which were an aggressive set of rules, certainly from the ones that we used to play years ago. And therefore, he would put aggression first. Um, you know, one or two of the old-timers um, would maybe have been looking for the red onto the yellow turnover shot there. Carl Morris certainly would have played it, I'm, I'm sure. I guess um, the balance you've got to find is the, the, the percentage play of how likely is your opponent to get out of the snooker and, and pop the ball Absolutely. compared to how the... the the percentage of you making that clearance. And absolutely. Sean absolutely backed himself there and, and came up with the goods. Sean makes a ball this time. Again, not quite the explosion of the pack that he's no. looking for. I'm wondering if the balls are actually racking that great, you know, if they're, if they're, if they're settling together and, the, the, you know, um, I also think he's he's bouncing the cue ball down quite a bit as well, so he's not getting the purest contact on the pack at the same time. Do you like the reds here? Well, I don't like the yellows. Extension call. So. Well, you say that, but again, he could play a yellow and play the turnover shot. Pot a yellow, then put play play off the yellow and pot the red over the pocket. Then yellow's a massive favourite. So there's a big there's a big big case for yellows there. Um, you know what I mean? I mean, it, yeah, the, the reds look like the attacking option because there's ball over the pocket. But if you pot a yellow there, come off the yellow and pot the red over the over the hole, yellow's a big favourite. And the one bad red that's on the table is actually a really bad red. Absolutely. Because even though he's got a couple of options to get close to it and he's trying to go for it now, it's hard to nudge it on. I think he can play this with an element of control, though, where he could, like, sort of bring the ball away, possibly. I mean, he could come in... He could come into it from behind the balls. He could play the red bottom, the bottom left, and come two cushions and cannon those balls out. He doesn't have to play the three ball plant. You know, he didn't have to play the plant, did he? No, and he's put himself into a, quite a bit of trouble here. I don't well, you know, know if, what, the if the bottom red goes. Well, he's having a look now. It's very tight. It yeah. looks like it goes from this angle. He's playing it, so it must go. Oh, it goes comfortably. Do you know what? This isn't too bad at all. Yeah. Because the eight ball, basically, what they like to call the skill shot, which, yeah. I didn't think that wet red went as comfortably as it did. It made such a big difference. This isn't that difficult at all. That eight ball, that eight ball to, to follow the yellow through. For somebody of Sean's class. I expect him to get this. No mistakes at all. Excellent from Sean Chipperfield. 
brilliant visit to the table. That was a, a messy layout, by far his best clearance in the match. And he managed to open it up and came up with the goods with a lovely skill shot to get that frame on the board. Yeah, well, I suppose on another day, the three ball plan could have gone a little bit more well, I th I thought, trickier, you know. Um, I thought it had gone wrong. I thought the two reds had come together in a position where he wasn't able to pot one and then open up the other, but they actually came out really nicely. So Sean is really taking it to Arfan, and for me, Arfan's made two mistakes in the match, and he finds himself in a bit of a hole. Can't really afford to make any more errors. Needs to find a ball here and get himself going once again. Well, you'd have to say, in fairness, that um, that Sean stepped it up yeah. a, a level or two, uh, certainly from, from, from his first match with Brian. Do you um, think there's a, a part of that is if once you get into the tournament, the first match is always a, a tricky match because you want to get into the tournament and get going? Yeah, and I think you how the table sits sometimes. Opportunities, settling into a game early. Sometimes the balls don't allow you to, or your opponent doesn't allow you to. You know, it's kind of tough out there when you're getting scraps, you know. it's. I think the issue for our fan is the two chances that he's had that he hasn't taken were, were probably better than the scraps. Yes. In terms of he's yeah. really good for a player of his level. He would have expected to clear them. And here's another one. Another opportunity for our fan. Yellow balls in play. Yeah, he was so determined not to catch his yellow ball when he was screwing out there then that he's actually come a little bit steeper on it than what he wanted, so he's going to have to take the other one. Yeah, didn't want to play that. He wanted to play the one that he was he was nearest to, but drawing out from the one, the first shot, left himself a bit steep on it. It yeah. almost looked like it sneaked in the middle pocket as well. I, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't look like it from the overhead, but from the other camera, it certainly did. He was so worried about flicking that yellow, though, wasn't he? And yeah. Any nudge on it, because he only had half a pocket as it was, Absolutely. was going to cause him a real headache. There's still plenty of work here for Sean Chipperfield to respond. We know he wants to be aggressive. Extension call. Mm. Having a look at all options. Plant below the, the eight ball. Not an easy one. Yeah, and, and, and in this instance here, he doesn't want to play the cannon into those two reds after he's taken the one in the middle, but he had no choice. He really would have liked to have left that because I see him potentially playing the one down the rail now and then either the plant or the cannon, whichever way he sees it. But he'd have loved to have had the ball over the middle bag when he was playing in this, you know, when he was playing this cannon there with the middle pocket. The problem with the cannon is he's knocking a, a red towards a cluster of yellows and the eight ball, so you want it to to really come out. Yeah, I like him to kind of hit it though and kind of top through it, kind of pop through it so that the balls really move, so you get a lot of momentum. I tell you what, that's a great shot he's played there. Not even played the I, cannon, he's played to, to play on the red. Yeah, I like that shot. Yeah, very good. If anything, he can be a a bit, a bit aggrieved that he hasn't knocked that eight ball another inch or two, otherwise these would have been gone. Eight ball's now the trickiest ball. Mm. It still goes. But getting to it. going to be tricky. If it goes another couple of inches when he plays that cannon. Do you think he's thinking about just a little nudge on the yellow and... Off the side rail well and cannon into it. Has, still hasn't quite got it out, and that's compromised position. Uh, that's not that's not terrible, though. That's not for somebody who, who obviously pots as good as Chippy does. Um, that's awkward bridging, unfortunately for him. Lovely shot. You see, when you pot as well as he does, you can leave yourself. You know, you leave yourself a shot. Has he overcooked it? Because he did pot it a little bit thin. This now looks very tight. He's on it. Oh, comfortably. Yeah. What a visit to the table from Sean Chipperfield. Another brilliant finish to punish another mistake from our fan, Dad. And 
How's that for a display of potting and it's but it's it's a display of potting that follows some really clever thinking as well. Really enjoyed that clearance. That back to back finishes he's just made have been very high tariff. The and shot that the shot that he played to Cannon the eight to play onto the red in the opposite corner was a really clever shot. Really liked the way he played it. The, 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 the one after was a little bit kind of okay. Yeah, could have done with slightly thicker contact. Yeah. But even so, he's he's you said it. He's stepped up from his performance against Brian Halcro in the previous round. He's really up to level. He's pretty much every time he's gone for a finish in this match, he's made it. I think it, all but every time he's gone to the table where he played one safety shot, he's he's cleared up. It's been very very high class, showing why he has a world title to his name in this match. And he now finds his break as well. That's the best break he's hit. Is he going to make a ball? Absolutely not. That shows you how mad this game can be. Yeah. The best break he hit by a mile, and he's come up dry. Why would there be any logic, eh? <laughs> Absolutely. Great reaction there from Sean. So we're just approaching the halfway point in terms of the... Mm. Match clock. I was about to say Arfan needs to find something and something quickly, but misses his first double. Yeah, I, w I wonder if he was quite as pushed to have had to play that with 20 minutes still left. Um, it is tricky when you're out there sometimes if trying to get a gauge of, you know, am I supposed to push the boat out a little bit here because of the time or, you know, doesn't want that in. Mm, didn't want that in because that was his last ball for the eight into the into the right centre pocket. Yeah, the eight's pretty well guarded as well. So Yeah, that was his ball. He didn't want that in. He's got to get... Uh, he's got to figure this out now and get back... To, try and get back uh, onto the eight. Assuming he gets to the eight. We're very, I'm, very, very, I'm very confident um, with, 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 with Chippy at the minute. The way he's played so far in this match, you'd be surprised if he doesn't. But yeah. He's still got to be precise in a couple of places here on these four reds. Not entirely as played, I don't think, but it's OK. He's got a, he's got a red to the left centre. My worry is that he could end up having to be on the one on the cushion to be the one onto the eight yeah, ball, which well, is not ideal. Well, I think he played on that there. I think he was playing on the one on the rail there, then this one, and then this would have been last. Um, straight on the rail looks to be the order of the day, doesn't it, to just draw straight the way back. Oh, he's left himself too much angle. Can he leave himself high, though, and still chip it in? Tom Cooney and Luke Gilbert, watch on. We'll see them in action. Tom's playing later on tonight. He's playing for the gap. He's playing for... And he's hit that beautiful. Wow. What a shot. What a shot. Well, Sean Chipperfield is in full right. flow. Wow. Another brilliant visit to the table. Another Arfan Dab mistake punished. And Sean Chipperfield showing us why he is a former world champion. This is brilliant stuff. It really is. Yeah, and you know what? I, I'm, I think he's feeling that good because I'm not sure he had to play it. I think he could have left himself high over the centre pocket and still chipped the eight ball in. But he was so confident, you know, in, in the way he's striking the ball. Yeah, that was excellent. That really was brilliant stuff from Sean Chipperfield. One frame away now from the quarterfinals. Arfan has 18 minutes and 12 seconds to try and find something. Has to win a minimum of five frames. And the frustration for, for Arfan is that he's had enough chances right, to be closer in this match. Well, he's run into top level pool. He's run into, you know, you make the odd mistake against somebody that's obviously playing as well as Chippy is. And this is why sometimes you get these score lines. You know, on another day you make those mistakes and you're kind of 4-3, not 6-1. You know, because your opponent doesn't punish you or... But nice solid break. He's got to start somewhere, so, you know, knock them in and see what happens, you know. If stranger things can happen. Yeah, you feel he's going to need some help, but he can't think about that right now. He has, all he can think about here is 
ne next opportunity, take the next opportunity, take it as deep as you can, and you just never know. Well, no, because it might it might not be the help from Sean that he needs. You know, maybe the um, maybe those pool gods might be looking down. Yeah, help as in a, a dry break or two. We can. S oh, he doesn't want that to sit on the eight ball. As long as it still goes to the bottom right, bottom left as we look from the overhead, he's okay. But I'm not entirely sure it does. Now, if he doesn't, he could he could play the plant and come down and give them a nudge, give the eight ball a nudge here, just like that. Good shot. And he's on the one in the centre, I think. Does he chip it in, or does he give the nudge? Gets you chip it in and knock the red away from the eight. That's what he's played. Ooh, just missed it. This is the nudge, which means his final positional shot will need to be a bit more precise, but he does have a nice area to land in. Uh, a, bit, a bit of preference here as well. Do you play the one over the hole and come out? And you could leave yourself a little bit of a funky type angle, or do you back yourself to pop the other one and leave the one over the hole? But yeah, that was the only thing with that. You can leave yourself a little bit of a fiddly one. Looks like the direct line coming back from this is just above the centre pocket. Yeah, it doesn't want to get any, any unintentional side spin on this. Mm, didn't get there because he was afraid. He was afraid of getting the unintentional side and clattering into those reds on the left hand side. Mm, there was a there was a there was a case for playing the trickier of the two yellows with two to go. But um, but when you're six one down and. 15 minutes left, everything starts to get difficult. Double into the side pocket, off the red, like that. Way! Oh, what a shot from what our fan dad. Back against the wall, absolutely nowhere, comes up with a magnificent double off the red. This is brilliant. Especially with the red being at low of the pocket, this really is a high class shot from our fan. Absolutely magnificent, keeps himself in the match. Both players having a bit of a laugh uh, about it. Sean would have half expected to come to the table with a nice clean run to the, the line, but he's still in control. Yeah, but even though when you're so far in front, you're still thinking, well, why did that have to go in? I've got <laughs> seven reds sat there waiting to be potted, and then, you know, I'm doing the, I'm doing the press conference and I'm out of here type of thing, you know? And I know it's... Um, Especially if he comes up dry in his next break. He'll be sat in his chair thinking about it a little oh, bit more. Oh, you what? Without a doubt. Even a, even a player of Sean's level, he doesn't want to start looking over his shoulder. If we sat here at 6-4 in five minutes' time, Sean's going to be thinking about that eight that's just been knocked into the side pocket off that red. In a strange way, he wouldn't have thought about it, uh, wouldn't have given it a second right, thought nine. if our fan had just made a... Break. You know, a good positional shot and made it a simple eight ball. Absolutely. It's amazing the mental side of the game. It, it, it's got to be dry. It has to be. It's just the way it is. His two best breaks in this match have well, both been dry. Had yeah. to be. So with 15 minutes and change left on the clock, there is still mileage in this for Arfan. But imperative, he makes a finish here. And they're not easy. They're not easy at all. So he's elected the Reds. Yeah, tricky little layout. And he's had easier layouts today that he's not been able to get over the line with as well. Yeah, there's a couple of ways he can play these. I'm going to kind of let him get on with it for a second because he could play these in two ways. Yeah, he could play this one and then play the one bottom right. But he also could have played for the one into, into the centre pocket, then bottom right, then the one next to the eight, then top right, bottom right. Which, hmm, there's an half an argument for saying which way was better, really. Um, I think looking at that now, the other way was slightly better because you're in the same principle, but the, the one next to the eight's gone. If that makes sense. Yeah, and that can become a, a bit of an awkward ball. It could be if you don't. Yeah. So you'd basically be in the position you are now, 
but the one next to the eight ball wouldn't be on the table anymore. And that is ideally where you would want to be. Because you're dropping a one down the cushion, last ball, eight ball there, yeah. he's sitting and waiting. Yeah, so he, the, the, the other pattern, I think, was just slightly the better of the two. Um, he's giving half a thought to playing one by the eight ball now. The problem is he'd be going into the eight ball and that could do some damage. Yeah. Now I think he's just got to play to just hold on to the, hold on to the yellow here. Don't let the cue ball spin. Hold on the yellow. Mm, OK. Well, now he's got to play the one down the rail and back out. If that yellow doesn't come off back off the cushion, he could have played the one next to the eight and screwed back to where he is now, which is why I said don't spin it off the yellow, duff it into the yellow. Well, he's still going to play it, he's but this is awkward. Play it. Yeah, yeah. That was very difficult. And another chance yeah. comes and goes for our fan dad. Just hasn't been clinical enough on those types of finishes. And that may may well be his last shot in the tournament. Sean Chipperfield is going to hope it is. This is his chance to win the match. Or his first chance to win the match, we should say. And especially early in the match, he had quite a few chances like this where there's only a couple of reds on the table, so it's quite wide open for his colour set. Four pots away. Walks around to have a look, make sure he gets the right angle on the next ball. You have to say it's been a brilliant performance from Sean. It really has been yeah, high class. I think Chippy's gone up a gear or two, certainly, from the first round. half hand has been left with a couple of clinical finishes and hasn't quite got the cue ball and, and the pattern quite right. But every time he has made the mistake, Sean Chipperfield has punished it. An absolutely brilliant performance from the former world champion, Sean Chipperfield, gets the job done and he moves on to the quarterfinals. Absolutely magnificent.